So this machine here is, uh, is our 250 conditioner. It is a dust blower, meaning all the, all the dirty dust that, um, that it picks up and comes through the blower is discharged out into here. And we'll talk a little bit more about low dust um, later on. So I'll just brag a little bit about the exact uh, company. They're a third generation farming company. They're a large custom harvesting business. Um, um, and they had a lot of ideas and things that they thought that if they built them and brought them to the industry, they could have a successful uh, manufacturing business. And these pieces of yellow equipment in the, underneath this roof is a big part of, uh, of what they've accomplished in 15 years, okay? Um, and so the owner of the company, when he was, had his harvesting business, he would actually make machines like this, okay, which is, they didn't call them conditioners, and that was a term, that we, a marketing term when we came up before, but he did that in, for his own harvesting company. The, the industry didn't, you couldn't go to the dealer and buy them. He built them for himself. One of his ideas when he started his manufacturing, he introduced conditioning as another step process for the industry. It works both for almonds and walnuts. We're primarily uh, uh, almond growers down here, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll try to keep focused on that. And so what this machine does is it has a pickup belt, just like a harvester, four foot wide. In front of it's very similar to like a harvester. And it picks up everything in that windrow, okay? And then it discharges, it comes off of the belt over to here, and it's kind of, the, 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 the nut stream is taking an arc, and as it goes across into that arc, this vacuum here is pulling the leaves and the dirt out of that stream that's coming off the pickup belt. Um, there's, a, there's a chain that runs through the machine, which call, we call it a stick chain, it's a bar chain, and it has gaps about 10 inches in there, okay? And so the, any sticks or wide materials are gonna ride on top of the chain. All the nuts actually fall through the chain onto the ground. And it's the sides of this machine, if you look underneath of it, it's just like a big funnel. So it's putting everything in a 30 inch wide wind row. And so um, sticks go right over the top, they go into the hopper in the back. Um, you can uh, dump this on the end of the row, or if you have a lot of sticks, you just dump it um, as you're going through the field and it'll actually discharge the stick pile far enough over so that when you're coming back through for your harvester pass, the sticks are out of the way. And then you, you can come back and pick them up with your labor after harvest. Um, so th this is our basic um, uh, conditioning machine. Uh, it's also the lowest price point um, where we're competing with um, some of the other uh, uh, de-sticker machines that kind of rake through, but they don't pick up the, the product. They kind of rake through it and they're trying to collect a stick every once in a while, okay? Uh, those will get about 50% of the sticks. This gets all of it. So you have the same tractor, you got the same driver. Um, the only really difference is the cost of the machine. It's a little bit more than the uh, Brand X rake, raking style de-sticker. Um, but we're doing the cleaning step as well. <clears throat> the other thing is the reason we call it conditioners is for almonds, there's a time period when you shake, sweep, put it in a windrow, and those nuts have to be dried, the holes have to be dried down to at least a 15% before you can put them in the trailer and then go to the hauler. <clears throat> when we start harvest down here, guys, probably five days from shake the trailer, pretty quick. As soon as we get out of non-parels, which is, that's the earliest variety, and we get into our pollinator varieties, that five days is now maybe 10, 15, certain areas it's out to 20 days. So that drying time from the time that they shook it and put it in the trailer is getting a long time. So what we call for conditioning is, is being able to, to, and so you're changing the way that you think about harvesting in that you shake one day, you sweep the second day and you condition on the third. Okay? And so, yeah, you got a couple of days of drying in there. You swept them up, you put them in a windrow, and that 30 inch wide 
nut row that's cleaned, we've got the, uh, the grass, the leaves, and the dirt. It's going down the center of the orchard, and it's going to dry a lot faster. Typical rule of thumb is about half the time whatever they're experiencing on a normal um, uh, harvesting process. So being able to uh, shake and get it in the trailer in half the time, there's some benefits there. Uh, from a farming practice uh, standpoint, it also allows the grower, instead of having 20 days or 15 days of all that additional stress on the trees because they can't get the water down because they got nuts all over the orchard floor. If you've conditioned that and put your nuts in the wind row, you can actually run your water on this tree row and that tree row, and it shouldn't get over into your nuts. So there's some farming practices things that um, are an advantage for running conditioners as well as the, the harvesting. Huh? Clean rows. Yes. And so the other advantage for the, for the harvesting side of their business is when you've got a nut row that's already got all the dirt, all the leaves and all the grass cleaned up and you come back with your harvester, another gear, maybe two gears is, that's what they do. You can just hit it fast, okay? Because you don't have all those leaves, all, the, all that dirt to have to deal with. So you're going a lot faster. Um, if you got older orchards with a lot of sticks, that wear and tear on your harvester can be excessive. Guys will, you know, we're going we're gonna to get the phone calls. I ripped the chain out of my harvester. I need it now. I got to go. So let, let's say that I, um, I tore up something on my conditioner. It's really not the end of the day. I parked that thing over to the side. I'm going to get it fixed. My harvester is still going. My tractor guys are still going. My nut runners are still running. I'm still harvesting. My harvester goes down. Everybody stopped. So you gotta make sure that the customers are greasing these bearings uh, every day. Kind of, you know, get them in the condition of uh, thinking when I'm dieseling up the tractor, do these things too, okay? So on this machine, when I'm, de when I'm dieseling up my tractor, I'm in between my harvesting, I'm gonna go through and make sure that I'm greasing these bearings every day. It's really important. Um, you got a bearing goes out because I didn't grease it. That's a big maintenance job. Um, the nature of handling wood and conveying those through the machines, the stick chain bars, they will get bent. It's going to happen. And so you're going to stand on the back in, on the hopper there without the machine running, obviously, and you're just going to look for bars. You can actually take a couple of long pry bars and just kind of straighten them out if needed. And it's, there's only two bolts. I just tell them, hey, order five spare bars, keep them on your truck and just replace those as you need. <clears throat> if you can't, straighten them up real quick. And then take those old bars, take them back to the shop. You can put them in the vise or put them on a, on a steel table, hit them with a big hammer and just straighten them out and reuse them. Wasn't that by design to make it soft steel to give? So they would pop so, something's got to give. Something's got to give. If you made that thing out of you know, train track steel and it would never bend, it would tear something else up. So, question? in the industry, would you explain that uh, how a lot of people start condition also, like so to the economics behind it, a cleaner load? Yes, yes. So, so here again, um, as conditioners came into the industry and the hauler, the receiver people started learning, oh my gosh, this guy here conditions his load and they come in clean. I open the door and those nuts just run into my factory. And the other guy down the street, it takes me two hours to unload the trailers because it's so full of sticks. And it's just, and then all those sticks are running through the plant, it slows my factory down. And you're paying for that space in the trailer. Yes, so what the industry is actually doing, they're helping us as salespeople sell this product because now they're doing um, a, so the trailers come in, you got a, a gross weight, then they go through whatever the sorting process is, and then the, the actual nuts are weighed again and all that other stuff, the sticks, the dirt, that actually becomes a deduct back to the grower. So, uh, and every year that number just keeps getting ratcheting higher and higher. Questions, questions? On a new machine, um, you 
run the belt for four hours and then retighten it? Or how do you check the, the belt on the PTO? Yeah, so it's going to, um, actually the, the PTO belt, I mean, you want to make sure that you don't get this thing too tight, but if it's starting to slip, it's going to talk to you right away. In other words, it squeals, okay? So um, it's easy to identify when it's getting too, too, uh, too, sli uh, uh, too loose. And so you do adjust it right here. This is a fine thread. Usually just one t complete turn. If it's starting to get a little bit um, noisy, it's starting to squeak, just one or two turns is all you need to do. And that'll tighten it back up and you keep on going. Um, you're gonna have to do that a couple, three times during the harvest. You know, the belt does stretch. Uh, the pickup belt that's right here, this is a standard flat belt pickup system, just like every other harvester has out there. And the most important thing on, on, a, on these kind of belts is not to over tighten them, okay? It is rubber. If you over tighten it, you just pull the thing and rip it apart. And so um, actually we open up the door and you reach through there. You just need about a quarter inch of deflection when you lift up on that belt. That's the proper tension. Um, and so the, the other part of it is keeping it tracked properly. And so you want to make sure that you use a tape measure and you measure the distance between the front bearing and the back bearing. And so when you're taking your adjustments, if I move that, you got to remember that I'm, my bearing is moving both sides of the belt. So 1 16th is actually an eighth inch adjustment because I'm pulling both sides of the belt. So, um, and then the enemy of all machines in the, in the orchard industry um, is tree rope, okay? So you got to keep the tree rope from wrapping up on the pickup belts. Um, and, uh, and if it does get wrapped up, it gets the belt tracked over off the one side or the other. And, and if you leave it in there, it'll actually tear the belt out. So it's got to be, you got to get a pocket knife and get that stuff cleaned out of there. Just the nature of what we do. Daily service points. Yeah, so our service points, um, most important thing is making sure that every day you grease these fan belts our fan bearings up here because of the speed and I mean they get they get hot you can't touch them after that thing's been running in the orchard they're extremely uh, they get really hot the conveyor barrel the conveyor belt bearings one or two so what's most important with bearings is don't pump dirt into the into the bearings so you take a, a rag I, I personally don't like these uh, service trucks with all this pneumatic stuff because they just over grease things and if when you over grease this bearing, you blow the seal out, you'll never be able to keep the grease in it because it just keeps flying out. So I like hand pump, take a rag, clean off the, the dirt that's, that's accumulated around the grease cert and just a couple pumps, that's it. If you do that every day, like you're supposed to, you won't have a problem all the way through the season. How about the drive line? Yeah, drive line is every day have to drive uh, grease the drive line again it's a high speed <coughs> and it's a critical safety uh, area of the machine that you don't want it to have it coming apart um, pickup belt again uh, just keeping it adjusted not too tight about a quarter inch deflection and keeping it clear of, of tree rope extremely critical if you if you miss that step you'll tear the belt out of it so this every day then on all the bearings on the um, actually, the, the speed, yeah, the speed of these convey, the convey bearings are actually very low. I mean, they're 150 to 250 RPM. So over, um, you won't need to grease those every day, okay? You know, once a month or once every other week or something like that is more than enough. How about uh, measuring the speed, you know, when you have your tachometer? Yeah, that's a good point. So we got a good quality John Deere tractor here that has hydraulic system with a flow control on it. Okay, so you always want to make sure that you got this set over on the gear. Okay, <clears throat> and so we're running, this machine is actually run, um, there's, we don't have a self-contained hydraulic, we're using the tractor hydraulics to run the machine. And, well, let me back up. We specifically designed the machine that way, okay, so that if you did get a rain, and you needed to run your conditioner through some, some nut rows and get those nuts dry, picked up and cleaned up and dropped back down for drying purposes. Okay, it only, if you get a rain, it only takes three days and you got moldy nuts. Could be a big loss. 
So what this allows you to do is not run the PTO because we're running the tractor hydraulics, but we're still running the rest of the conveyors on the machine. So we're, we can pick up those nuts and drop them back down, basically turn them over in the event that we do have a rain. And it's low dust. Yeah, and, and no dust there. So, but we do have uh, good John Deere hydraulics. And so your flow control is going to be set at about 16 gallons. So yeah, I could put a flow meter on here and I could do it that way. Actually, the easiest way to do it is just do it with a hand tack on the drive motor that's on the pickup belt. And we want to set that about 230 to 240 RPM. That's roughly the 16 gallons we need. Most of these tractor John Deere's, you know, they're 20, 23 or whatever they are. Um, and so, you know, you might have guys saying, hey, my, my hydraulics are overheating. This is the number one thing that I always go and check, okay? Because they just think that, you know, all, is, all wide open is just better. And so what you're doing is you're putting 20 plus gallons of oil down a 16 gallon hole, you're overheating the hydraulics, okay? So just simple setups um, make harvest a lot easier. Questions? You have your flow box on the other side? Yeah, it's on the other side, so we won't go over there just to reset up the camera, but there is a uh, flow control on the opposite side of the machine. And so we set the hydraulics for the, the pickup belt and for the machine hydraulics, and then we'll adjust the stick chain with another flow control uh, that's independently over on the other side of the machine. Dampener for the suction and less suction, more suction. So what we have up here, I might have to move, I'm sorry. So uh, what we have here is um, actually we call this a wind board. That's kind of the, the, the term that we use and it's hanging on these chains and they got keyhole slots. And so you can raise and lower the wind board, which um, changes where the airflow is coming from. The higher the wind board is, the more airflow that's gonna come over the top of the chain, the lower the wind board, it actually pulls more air through the chain up. Okay, increasing the amount of suction. Um, all the way down in certain conditions, there's gonna to be too much vacuum and you're starting to pull nuts through the blower and, and discharge them out. So that's what you're looking for is that balance between getting all your product cleaned and not over sucking and grinding your product up. Questions? I have pressure on here. 40 pounds. For yeah, 40 pounds. You know, and this stuff sits around all winter and they'll all look at them and they'll say, hey, it looks good. I could probably put a gauge on this machine just because it's a new one that's been sitting around and they're, they're probably 10 pounds different on the four corners. So <clears throat> that, it's my other analogy I talked about of taking your wife to, the, to dinner in the table, you know, and it's like, it's just not balanced. So the machine has that same behavior when it's going through the field if it's not supported equally on those four points. Can you get a camera to see how much? Yes, yeah, so there is there is an option, um, and so we uh, will mount a camera right back in this area, and that'll tell you how high the stick pile is going for the driver. He'll have a monitor inside the cab, and it just gives him another idea. When you're in a really heavy stick field, um, <clears throat> and you got to dump it uh, as you're going down the row, the camera is really good. Most guys are going to want to, they probably don't have that many sticks and they're just going to go all the way through and as they make their turn, whether it's full or not, they're just going to dump it. You talk about the percentage of sticks and leaves and uh, delivery. Do you guys have data on that as a selling point to why conditioning is a good process? So, so say that again. I'm Charge back your yield on your delivery. Yes, yes. So um when so you're, you're talking about for shell out yes yes so there actually is some data um, most of the growers actually <clears throat> will get that information back from their hauler and from their sheller and you know we all talk about the price of nuts that's the big number okay the big number is actually only about 20 to 25 percent of what the grower gets on most of his nuts. And so he's trying to get the most out of that 25% because everything else is on a deduct basis. They get chipped and broken, whatever happens, 
it's a lower lower quality so he gets paid on the premium which is that 20 to 25 percent so the run a, a nut through a cracker you need a certain amount of meat moisture in there to get a good what they call a shell out conditioning actually really benefits your turnouts running through your sheller okay and he, you know he'll get his data back he did it like he did his you know his farming job and he'll look at his his pay sheet basically that's going to be his his check and you know if he's got his turnouts down to 10 15 percent he's not happy that's a lot of money that he lost it's, it's a lot more than just the cost of a machine so again that's another value and thank you for bringing that up